when I started getting interested in engineering and science, I think my strongest motivation was that I wanted to be useful and I wanted to solve problems. You know, my mom definitely emphasized when I was younger, and my dad as well, that it's important in your life to do something that, that people can use in some way. On the reservation, they really emphasize education for young people. There is an emphasis on bringing back what you learn to your tribe and college graduates who go to different cities and go to college, they go outside the reservation. When they come back and they work for the tribe or they work for a company, people are really happy to see them and they always personally thank them and say, you know, you're doing something really good for your people. And when I kind of expressed interest in going to get a graduate degree, everybody was very supportive of me. When I was working for the Environmental Protection Agency for the tribe, I was exposed to a lot of the environmental legacy issues that are on the reservation. In the 50s and 60s, a lot of oil and gas companies, big power plants, natural gas compressor stations, a lot of that industry came to the reservation and set up leases and set up infrastructure. And at the time, there wasn't really anybody from the tribe that was educated enough to deal with some of the technical uh, environmental issues having to do with resource extraction and there was also a lot of coal mining so when a lot of these uh, original leases were signed you know the, the tribe didn't really have any expertise within its own membership in order to assess some of the impact of these issues and so historically you know maybe some things weren't done as well as they should have been and that has left us with a lot of environmental issues that, that haven't been addressed. I think that when you live there, when you're from there, you have a different understanding of the people and of the culture. And a lot of outside consultants who are experts in geophysics or geology or engineering, they don't have that perspective. And I think there's something that can be added from integrating that into how the tribe currently addresses a lot of their technical problems. One of my interests is actually looking at how, how tribal members can actually get technical expertise and go back and help the tribe. And be able to educate council delegates and the people in government on some of these issues in a way that they understand and also help educate the public. I think, you know, just from my experience working with the tribe, if you get people who are technical experts, sometimes they don't know how to communicate their information to a level where your typical Navajo who comes to their local government chapter, they don't communicate it in a way that they can understand. That's definitely one of my motivations in graduate school um, and in life in general is to be able to communicate what I know no matter how complicated it is. I really believe that you can communicate what you know to everybody, the general public, small children, older Navajo grandmas and people who don't speak English. There's a way to talk to them. I actually really didn't like math <laughs> when I was in high school um, and I didn't do very well in some of my classes but after, after I graduated and I started taking college classes I discovered that I really loved math and I did really well in it and I think that's kind of an interesting story for younger children or maybe high schoolers who think oh I'm not good at this and it's like well maybe you haven't had the right teachers or maybe you'll look at it differently when you're um, a little bit older a little bit more mature um, so I think that's that's kind of what led me down that path and solving problems as an engineer is definitely important and it seems like with a PhD in geophysics you can solve bigger more important problems and broader problems related to earth science <laughs>